Thanks for the support as a channel member, Liam Conlon. Well, here's a sentence I didn't think I was going to be saying when we got our Champions League draw. We might be about to knock Juventus out of the Champions League. Hello and welcome to part 141 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are away against Juventus in our final Champions League group game. And we're, at, and we're at, then at home against Leicester in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, we have been on something of an unbeaten run, although we are starting to draw a few games. We've been on these runs before. We know how they end. You win a lot of games consecutively. Then you start sprinkling in a few draws and you start drawing some of the games you should have won, Watford. Brighton, and then the defeat comes. Juventus, and then it all falls apart for a little while. We know, we know the pattern. We're going to try and stop it happening, but it is it is a little easier said than done. So we'll we'll see. Normally, I would rotate for a game like this, but because I can see the pattern happening, um, I'm going to try and avoid it. This is what the Champions League group looks like. We've won five from five. We've already won the group. We don't need to win this game, other than to avoid a, the start of a slippery slope. But of course, if we win, we are going to knock out Juventus almost certainly um, because they're, in fact, forget almost certainly, they're below they're below Valencia. Valencia are ahead of them on head-to-head. So if unless, unless Juventus do better than Valencia, Juventus are done. I don't think there's a way for Hoffenheim to still get through. But I don't, I mean, I don't care. We're through. We've won the group. This is the team we're going to play. We've got Paquita in goal. A back four of Giladucci, De Silva, Diaz and Arango. Addo at the base of the midfield. Ricardo and Steinman ahead of him. Cook and Cern and Jackie supporting Soma up front. I know you love Gomez, but he's playing in the league. Soma can play in this one. Soma's been injured for a long time. He's not match fit. We're going to give Soma a try. Janino deserves to be on the bench. So Christian Gomez can just have a, have, have a few days off. And he will play in the Leicester game as long as he doesn't pick up an injury between now and then. Just like, at, I mean, at no point this season have I written off Gomez, replaced Gomez. I just have two, possibly three top level strikers now. So we don't need to play them all, all the time. I would like to have someone as good as Serna Jackie on the other side. Bellico's not quite got it. Um, to the level Cerna Jackie has, but if Soma can get to the point where he scores as many goals as Gomez does, or Janino, it doesn't matter which one of them does it. Uh, I, 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 have, I have no horse in this race. I just want somebody to start scoring as prolifically as Gomez so that we don't have to panic whenever Gomez gets an injury or misses a penalty because we know we've got somebody just as good to just draft straight into the team. So that's what we're working on with Soma and with Janino, which is why Gomez didn't need to travel today. It'll keep him nice and fresh for Leicester. Right, Ricardo wins the ball back deep in our half, uh, but he's got absolutely nobody challenging him as he just runs almost the full length of the pitch. He's got plenty of players up supporting him. He decides to give it to Addo, who gives it back to Ricardo. He's still not managed to catch his breath yet. Does get a decent cross into Soma, who nods it down to Cook, and there's Serna Jackie. It was a nice move, but Serna Jackie... Couldn't quite keep his header down. Uh, question marks there over Soma's contribution. I don't know whether he should be playing that back to Cook. I think Gomez shoots and probably scores, whereas Soma's trying to be more of a team player, which it's a weird thing to moan at somebody for, but I want that killer instinct from my striker. I want my striker to be looking for goals for himself at all costs rather than trying to play in his buddy. So we might have to have a little bit of a word with Soma and train him to there's a shoot on sight trait isn't there is that a trait or is that an instruction we might have to have a little look at just encouraging him to take a few more shots when he gets into position because he does that's a couple of times now i've noticed him maybe look for a pass when there it was almost easier to have a shot in fact he even said he's already got the trait tries first time shots so why is he not doing it Is that the trait I'm looking for or is there another trait? None of them seem to suggest that he has a trait to look to play other other players in. See, he's been quite error prone today. We're getting the message saying take him off. So he's had an hour. We take him off. Janino can come on. In fact, in fact, Sebastiao can come on. Sebastiao has already got a Champions League goal to his name this year. He's our, he's our young wonder kid the Brazilian who became a Frenchman. 
and has looked very good in the in the couple of substitute appearances he's made so far. So maybe he'll become the one who competes with Gomez. Ricardo to Addo. Out to Giladucci, who plays it back to Addo again. To Ricardo. Back to Addo. Addo's just having every other touch here. Everything comes through Addo. Cook. Back to Ricardo. Giladucci's in. Plays it all the way back to Addo again, who finds Steinman. Addo to Ricardo. We've had the ball for a long time here, and Addo has had probably 20 touches in this move. This is what we spent all that money on. A proper deep line playmaker who just controls a move like this. I like having a player who's just going to stand there and do that. And every time we're not sure what to do, just give it back to him. Let him decide what to do and pick the right pass. And it just it's a nice way of camping out on the edge of an opponent's penalty area, which often leads to a goal. Right, we're going to bring Janino on on the left-hand side for Cook. Cook hasn't been... Uh, Hasn't been particularly threatening so far today. There's an argument we could have put Ricardo out there and brought on either Samiento or Ariel, but I wanted to bring Janino on. I talked about him all throughout the first half, so let's get him on out wide and try him out there. A lot of you still think Janino's future is as a winger because of his height, making it difficult for him to be a lone striker. Giladucci plays it back to Addo again, who is looking for options again, finds Steinman. Steinman and Addo are both running in the wrong direction here. One of them needs to turn and get the ball moving forward. In fact, De Silva's done it for them. And Janino's in here. And that's a big opportunity for Janino. That was his that was the best chance of the game so far to put us ahead. Not that we need to win. A draw is fine. A draw shouldn't cause us to start collapsing, hopefully. Um, we're going to bring Samiento on for the final change for Ricardo in central midfield. Um, we're going to ask for some creativity. A draw away against Juventus is always going to be a good result. I don't care how good they are. In fact, a draw is a good enough result for them at the moment. Uh, Hoffenheim currently beating Valencia. So it'd be interesting what would happen there if we were to take a lead. But we're not going to because Juventus have just scored. They've taken the lead. And this is everything that I was worried about happening now. Not because of the Champions League, but because of what it might potentially mean for the game after this one. We'll see. As long as we win the next league game, I won't start to worry. But I, we've all played this game enough to understand how these patterns tend to work themselves out. And I imagine there's a few of you as worried as I am about what they're seeing. Gomez will, Gomez will make the difference. He'll come back in for the next game and we'll be fine. Arango's got himself sent off as well, which is utterly needless. and means he's now going to be suspended for the first knockout round for whoever we get in that. And that is just silly. There's no reason at all for him to get himself sent off there. I'm not going to bother making a change. We can just play with a three at the back, no right back. Cerner Jackie can be the entire right hand side. We're trying to we're trying to get forward and attack here. I don't want to I don't want to lose Geladucci going forward on the other side. So we'll just play without a right back. I can't see how that can possibly go wrong. I guess we could have put Addo back there, but then we lose him from the attack, and we're we've got five minutes to try and grab an equaliser. So as long as we keep the ball down the other side. We might be all right. Uh, why is Janino the one defending a corner there in the air? What a what a ridiculous state of affairs for little old Janino trying to win a header. Um, well, Juventus half through. I'm not. Oh, that's I pressed the wrong button. I wanted to say I wasn't happy. I've done that i don't have anything to say i've messed the team talk up not only have we had the first defeat in a long time the team talk's been messed up this is where it begins boys and girls this is where it begins <laughs> right hopefully we'll beat leicester so a couple of changes for the leicester game gomez comes back in as promised news about gomez in fact um i think i mentioned it on twitter i don't think i mentioned it in a video he has now got his 100 premier league goals it took him 153 games which by my count makes him the fourth fastest man in history to hit 100 uh, to hit 100 premier league goals only shearer kane and aguero got there faster than him um, and of course his four consecutive golden boots is also a premier league record so christian gomez surely one of the best strikers in premier league history um, and he's finally getting the recognition he deserves with both him and Serna Jackie making it onto the favoured personnel list. One day, they might become icons like Jamal Hector Ingram, who played for us for one year. It's broken. It's very broken. 
Um, so addition to Gomez coming in, and um, we've moved Addo further forward, Ricardo being rested for this game. Bonilla comes in because I think we mentioned this in the last episode. He's looking for game time. I promised him game time. So I'm going to give him some game time. Addo looks good. Addo can play in any of these three positions and look fantastic. So I have no issue with playing him in any of them. Um, but other than that, we're trying to avoid making too many changes because of my current working theory that the cause of the uh, Champions League hangover is making too many changes because you're worried about the Champions League hangover. So hopefully with just a couple of changes in there, we should be in a position to go and beat Leicester. Leicester are eighth in the league. That's Henshaw who used to play for us, isn't it? The centre-back. So he shouldn't be a danger from there. And in fact, Cook wins the ball back off him. Um, and Gomez is there to turn and run, as we know Gomez does very, very well. Cross comes over from Gomez looking for Serna Jackie and they've teamed up once again. Is there a better combination in the history of the world than Gomez and Serna Jackie? A tenth goal of the season for Serna Jackie. Set up for him on a plate by Christian Gomez 90 seconds into the game. It's a lovely cross and Serna Jackie is so good in the air. I don't know if I've ever had a better header of a football than Serna Jackie. He's such a constant aerial threat. Uh, is there? Let me know, um, stats nerds. Oh, Cook's in to make it two. Five minutes on the clock. That's nice. That's very nice. Hangover no more, boys and girls. We're two nil up after five minutes. What I was asking is, is there a way to go back through Serna Jackie's history and have a look to see how many of his goals have been headers? I'm assuming it's fairly easy to find out for this season, but is, there, is that the sort of thing that's tracked historically in the game or are those stats lost once you get to the end of a season? Because I would, I would guesstimate that at least half of his goals this season have been headers. And that's probably that's probably fairly standard for him. He's such an aerial threat. Yet he takes the corners because we've got other aerial threats in there. De Silva with the, with the header, but somehow Bonilla's got the goal. I need to see this from the other angle to work out how this isn't De Silva's goal because we aim for De Silva. De Silva connected with it. He's the one who's been given the assist. And Bonilla's there on the line, just goal hanging offside as well because there's, he was behind the goalkeeper. So there's only the one player between him and the goal line I'm not really sure how that's not been given offside I certainly don't understand how he's been given the goal but he has Serna Jackie's in again with another header from a Gomez cross and that one goes just wide we are absolutely rampant today all over Leicester and we need to be because that Manchester United and Manchester City are starting to get a little bit of a breakaway going here and we need to make sure they don't get too far ahead of us we still are quietly hoping for a league win at some point Realistically, it's probably not going to be this season, but, you know, it would be nice to be competitive. Gomez is in here and surely Gomez scores. Of course, he's. how is that offside? Ref, how can you tell from there? There's no way you can tell from there. It's such a good finish. Just let it stand. It's going to make no difference to Leicester. They're not getting back into this game. Oh, and look at the state of that. He is level. You give that. You absolutely give that. That's a nonsense. Um, Giladucci plays the free kick forward to Addo and it's now with Benia and Steinman. Very good midfield three, this one. I, I, I like all of the combinations we've got in our different parts. I think this is, I mean, it, it should go without saying the time we've been here now and how well we're doing, but this is obviously a much better squad than we've had previously. I'm very happy with this team and Cook is in now and he's getting better all the time. And there's a fifth goal of the season for Lee Cook and it is now 4-0. We look a different side with Christian Gomez in there, don't we? We really, really do. This is, uh, I mean, it, I don't know how much is having Addo forward as the Mazala as well. How much How much impact does he make? He's not had a great game, apparently. So I guess not very much. We've, we've Leicestered Leicester here. I've just noticed on there, they've had 63% of the possession. And we've just been absolutely brutal on the counter-attack. They've not had a shot. But they've had all of the ball and we just take it off and run up the other end and score. They're not having a very nice time. They're f they finally get a shot from a free kick from about 35 yards out. And Bakita tips it over the crossbar for a corner. And I think oh, it's a third corner of the game for Leicester. So they they've had three corners and not had a shot from them yet. That suggests we're defending our corners quite well. And we've done it again there. A nice headed clearance. Although Leicester are keeping hold of the ball. But this might explain how they've had so much possession because, they, yeah, they kept hold of the ball, but they took it all the way back into almost their own half and never actually 
got a shot away in that move. Whereas when we're attacking, our priority is get the ball forward, get a shot quick, because then we're more likely to score a goal. So Addo's there, plays it to Giladucci. There'll be a shot in a minute. There you go. Cross comes in. Cerner Jackie's got it. There's a shot. There's a goal. 11th goal of the season for Cerner Jackie. Fifth goal for us this afternoon. What a contrast between the way Leicester are playing and the way we play. We're so direct. And when we're when we're on form, when we're playing well, that directness is an absolute killer. And Cerner Jackie is... He, I mean, he's been fantastic since we've signed him. But he is getting better and better and better all the time. To the point where I'm starting to believe that the man who takes the Premier League golden boot off of Christian Gomez is most likely going to be Mita Sernajaki. Because I think he's Premier League's top scorer at the moment. And he is just scoring for fun. Right, we're going to take off Addo, bring on Ricardo in there. Um, Sernajaki can come off. There's no point keeping him on. I know he's on a hat trick. But with his, his, with his, with his history of... Uh, weaknesses and little niggling injuries when we're five nil up and he start he's dropped below 70 percent conditioning that means get him off quick we're also going to bring on Janino for the last 10 minutes i'm i'm starting to think Janino might be might be my second choice striker behind gomez i'm not sure it's a nice problem to have. Mark that off on your cliche bingo cards. We've got lots of good players and we've just played some good football. And I guess I had no reason to be worried off the back of the Juventus game because we've just absolutely smashed Leicester. Lovely stuff. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.